I polled my viewers asking, do you have all of your sanding supplies and sanders nicely organized in a dedicated location? 67% of you said no. Clearly, there is a need for you guys to get more organized. And to be honest, I'm just as guilty. I've been storing my sanding supplies in this drawer for way too long. And I bet I'm not the only one guilty of this wood shop sin. Messy and unorganized wood shops are the scourge of all woodworkers. In this video, I'm going to solve this problem and build the ultimate sander storage solution. Plans available. Let's go to SketchUp. The ultimate plan was to design one entire French cleat mounted unit that could hold all of my sanders, sandpaper, and miscellaneous sanding tools with some extra space for future sanding doodads and such. I believe this design nails it. And no shop project would be Dude Sada certified unless I use some of my scrap wood from my rolling scrap wood cart. Designing this sanding storage solution in advance made it so much easier to build. Using SketchUp to model my projects made this build such a breeze. If you are one of the many who needs something like this, then you are in luck because I have a link to these plans in this video description. I made them super simple to follow. All of my digital build plans are inspired by Lego. Lego plans are easy to follow and I incorporate similar instruction techniques, so check them out. With any project, labeling the cut pieces prevents a ton of confusion later when assembling. Just a tip. The next step is to drill holes in the marks that I'm measuring out so carefully in this back panel. I have already dialed in the ideal spacing between dowels that will give a home to my belt sander sandpaper. The key is to make sure the dowels are exactly 90 degrees perpendicular to the back panel. But the best way to do it is with the drill press and my drill press is too small. It doesn't quite reach all the way to here and I want these holes to be the right depth and the right angle. I don't want them skewed at all. Ideally, if you have one of those portable little drill presses that you can place on top, I think Rockler has one that's really good. That would be ideal, but I don't have one and frankly, I don't want to spend the money to buy one just quite yet. So I have an idea and I hope it works. I'm going to make a jig out of this that will allow me to drill fairly straight, hopefully exactly straight, with the right depth. And I'm going to show you how I do it. I cut off a large enough piece and then drilled all the way through with an inch and a quarter Forstner bit. Once it started smoking, I realized that this bit is pretty dull. Luckily, I was able to complete the drilling and I'll sharpen it later. On the other side, I drilled a larger hole. My thought process was that this would allow for glue squeeze out. This jig is just about done. I need each of these dowels to be able to slide in here nice and easy, but right now they're just a little too snug. So I got an idea. I have two options. Either A, I can make all of the dowels thinner, time consuming, or B, I can make this a hair bit wider. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I have this curved file that I'm gonna use to make it a little bit wider so these will slide nice and easy. I need to be able to line this hole right up with this X where the dowel is going to be drilled into. In order to do so, these are inch and a quarter diameter, so half of that is five eighths of an inch. So I'll just mark five eighths of an inch on all four sides, and that'll give me kind of a reference point of where to go. Now, when I line up this way, I can look down and line up those marks. Full disclosure, I cut this jig to be the perfect height so that as I drill the Forstner bit, it will penetrate deep into the plywood without going all the way through. The jig is working pretty good at allowing me to drill straight down at a 90 degree angle. I feel like it's pretty good. On the other hand, my original idea was to glue it in with the jig in place and then it would be straight. But I'm starting to lose a little confidence in that and I think what I'm gonna do is just use my speed square to level it up. I think that'll be the better idea. Ultimately, the jig was only a semi-success. It was clear the large glue squeeze-out hole underneath it made it too unstable, and I wasn't able to verify that the dowel was square to the plywood. You know, I knew it was a great idea that I kept all these cutoffs. And if you like this scrap card, I got plans available in the description to this video, so check it out. With my stop lock in place and a little help from some Type Bond 2 wood glue, a silicone glue brush, and my trusty speed square, these dowels were set up for success. The side panels needed grooves cut out before assembling the large sides of the box. 
These would give home to quarter inch dividers for sandpaper. I ever so slightly moved the table fence over in 1 16th to 1 8th inch adjustments until I had all of the grooves cut out and evenly spaced. Such a simple task as attaching the side panels proved too much for my skill set that day. Here's me realizing that I put glue on the wrong edge of the panel. Ugh, I'm such an idiot. Ah, I can at least wipe it off and I'll just have to do some sanding later. Fortunately, I had enough clamps for this glue up. I bought these handy red corner clamps from Harbor Freight. They were only about four and a half bucks a piece and worked quite well. These glue ups can be a little complicated, so I'm going to take it in a step by step approach. First, we're going to glue this piece in. I'm going to use the shelf piece as a spacer. It's already going there, anyways. That is in there perfectly. Now, now, I'm going to use my speed square to mark where I can nail. For this shelf piece, I got my speed squares dialed right in. So let's glue and fasten. These shelf dividers need grooves cut in them as well and will lie vertical. I used the same quarter inch width method to match the previous grooves. Once again, my mistakes are really getting in the way of progress. So if you look here, that looks really nice, except I got a little discombobulated and I'm gonna have to do this over again. Oh well, that's what happens. And by the power of editing, or lack thereof, problem solved. I must say, that is how it's supposed to be. Done right. The remainder of the 3 quarter inch plywood is assembled with wood glue and brad nails. I must say the red positioning squares came in real handy. I could not have gotten these pieces to be square to each other without them. I took my time, as you should as well. I have to remind myself that it isn't a race. Although these videos simplify the build, I oftentimes make more mistakes than I have time to include in the editing. If there is something of value, then I try to share it. Of course, to be honest, some mistakes I make really take a dig at my self-esteem. Hopefully moving forward, I'll be confident enough to really show the worst of my follies, because I know the viewers like them, at least like watching them. The order at which you put these pieces together really depends on your preference. The plans I made for this show an alternative order of operations. Either one works, and having two different orders I thought would be helpful for anyone wanting to build this same sanding storage unit. I have these shelf dividers, and I'm going to stack them all perfectly, and then using this carpet double-sided tape to secure them all in one block. And then I'm going to cut a hole so that it makes it easier for when I'm grabbing those pieces of sandpaper. The advantage to this method is sanding them all at once is a real breeze. Also, this particular double-sided carpet tape leaves no sticky residue and is really inexpensive. I'll leave an Amazon affiliate link in the description in case you're interested in buying some for yourself. Plus, it really supports this channel at no extra cost to you. Full disclosure, I made a boo-boo right here that I am not happy with. Somehow, during the very first initial glue-up of these sides, this part came loose a little bit this way, and is sticking proud this way, and is also sticking proud a little bit high. Not sure how or why that happened, but it did. I'm going to go ahead and sand this flush here so it's no longer proud. Maybe even sand the side here so that it's lined up. It will expose underneath the veneer, but that's okay because I'm going to paint it anyways. I'm going to do some overall general sanding on the seams and the edges, and then we'll get to painting and finishing. I think I spoke too soon. Did I mention that this was going on my French cleat wall? I have some leftover cleat scraps that are already cut at 45 degree angles and come in real handy when I'm building any tool holders for the cleat wall. And I have just the perfect spot for such a holder. For the hard to reach places, I just used spray paint out of convenience. And while I was at it, I sprayed the rest of it too. But I really didn't like the flatness of this satin paint. I say satin in air quotes. 
So later I went back and painted black with a foam brush over the easier to reach areas. I like my tool holders to have a little pop, some pizzazz if you will. So in keeping with the theme of my previous videos, I painted these cubbies the brand color of the sanders that would be housed there. True story, every day when I leave for work in the morning, I exit my home through the garage. Each time I take a moment, look at my tool wall with all of its holders, and really get a sense of pride and satisfaction. It's the perfect way to start one's day. I didn't have a well thought out design for the side panels and was just crossing my fingers that it would look good. It's not really my best work, but I don't think it looks absolutely horrible either. You can be the judge. For the finish coat, I used Minwax Polycrylic Clear Satin Spray for the hard to reach places, which is a water-based polyurethane. I applied three coats. For the remainder, I brushed on Bear's water-based polyurethane. As a bonus feature, I installed these plastic frame storage nets that are commonly used in vehicles to store small items. I have these profile contour and angle sandy grips that will store inside of these perfectly. This is the most satisfying part of the project, filling it up. Although this project was riddled with many mistakes, as do all of my projects, it's the mistakes that make us better. I mean, I should be nearing perfection here pretty soon with all the mistakes I make. It's just math. I'm just a hobbyist woodworker and even but a splinter in the great oak tree of YouTube. I don't do this as my full-time job, but in my everyday career, I have done quite a bit of training and education of my coworkers. One thing I'll tell them to ease their anxieties of the pressures of our field is any mistake you make, I've already made twice. So if you're watching this video or any of my videos, just know you can do this too, and it's okay to mess up. If you like this shop project video, then you've probably got a shop with some scrap wood that needs some tending to. Have I got a treat for you. I take a scrap wood cart to the next level with the greatest scrap wood storage idea of all time. So click on this video right here to be entertained and fine tune your wood shop organization. See ya.